Well, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us here. This is the Meeting House on Faith Radio, and it is great to welcome to the program Scott Pryor. He is involved in a movie that's actually made quite a bit of an impact through a video on demand. It's called Tulsa, and it's actually one that, as I understand it, it made a theat or it's in a theatrical run. Plus, you've got video on demand that's been added to. And, you know, in these in these times, especially in the pandemic, this is a very challenging time to get a film out there. The name of the film is Tulsa. And Scott is the co-writer and director of the film. He's in addition to being a filmmaker. He's also an attorney. So someone wearing many hats, putting on his film hat today to spend some time with us. Scott Pryor. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for having me. Um, yes, absolutely. Tulsa did a 13-week run in theaters uh, in 2020. Uh, it was definitely tough because most people didn't understand that theaters were open. And then uh, once they figured out theaters were open, there was limited seating and people were afraid to go out. Despite that, though, um, we had an awesome run and a very, very limited budget in terms of the marketing. Uh, but we actually set a record for the second highest grossing uh, film domestically for self-distribution distribution to theaters. So uh, we picked up a lot of press uh, on that. And, and we just, we knew that Tulsa, uh, we knew it was a tough time to put a movie in theaters, but we felt like it was what the country needed. Uh, the, the, you know, we're, we're dealing with COVID and, you know, political unrest and just unrest in general and kind of a, a lot of people dealing with anxiety, depression. And we said, you know, Tulsa is a movie about hope and inspiration and love and, and redemption. And we said, what else is a country, you know, that's what the country needs right now. And so we decided to make that decision and take that risk and, and, and go with theaters uh, across the country. And, and um, it, it certainly paid off. And we had a lot of response from people across the country, how it was really what they needed um, at these times. So we're, you know, we're excited. Uh, you know, we want to help as many people as we can with the film. And so uh, we're, we're super blessed and, and proud. And, and I'm proud of everybody who worked so hard to make the film. Um, and obviously the grace of God um, kind of paved the way for sure. Well, that is awesome. And we're going to talk just a bit about your story, your entree into filmmaking, God's work in your life while talking about the, the film being released and some of the mechanics here during a, a pandemic. I thought it'd be interesting just to, at the front end, talk about the film itself. Give us an idea about the overall concept, if you would. Sure, sure. So Tulsa uh, was inspired by true events. Um, like you said, I'm, I am a trial lawyer. Uh, we go nationwide. And what we, what we specialize in is uh, really serious injuries or death claims. Uh, so right now I'm, I'm representing a family in Texas who lost their mom. Somebody hit them head on. It's just horrible tragedies. So I pull a lot of uh, the material from my scripts uh, from true life um, inspirational stories. And in this particular um, case, I was preparing for trial um, on a case that I've been working on. And um, I had a conversation with, with uh, the father and the family. And, and I said, you know, what, what, what sorts of things, um, how has this uh, injury affected your lives? And, and the, the daughter said, excuse me, the father said, you know, I used to love to go to the daddy daughter dance with my daughter. And we would, um, you know, be there and, and, uh, for hours on end. And then after the, uh, after the injury occurred, we could only go for five or 10 minutes and it's really hurt us because, you know, that's the things in life that, you know, get our attention. It's not, it's not, you know, money and all, obviously there's hospital bills and all that, but those are the things that kind of hurt us. And so, um, so just drawing um, from that conversation and preparing for the trial, um, it just inspired me to, to write Tulsa. And um, so anyhow, Tulsa is about a uh, young girl who uh, finds her father and uh, her long lost father and Tommy Coulson, who's uh, one of the main characters, Tommy Coulson, who's the, who plays the father of the little girl. He's a Marine biker. He's down on his luck. He's suffered uh, you know, PTSD, but he's also suffered major tragedy in life. And he's just hanging. He's just clinging on to life, uh, barely. And then one of his friends calls him up and says, hey, I found your daughter. Well, it was a daughter he never knew he had. And so um, he agrees to meet you know, meet this little girl. And, and again, he's not fit to be a father. He's, I mean, he's, he's ready to end it all. And uh, the girl forces her way into his life and she's a very spirited, spunky little girl. And so there's a lot of comedy, a lot of friction. She wants to clean, clean him up and, and uh, he doesn't want to be cleaned up. So uh, originally they end up fighting each other, but then they end up fighting for each other. 
And uh, it's just a, it's just an awesome uh, story about, you know, people uh, coming together and, and just love and family and redemption. And her name is Tulsa. Her name is Tulsa. Is there any connection to the city of the same name? Um, no, although I love, uh, I love Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I, I love the people of Oklahoma. They've supported the project, and they're awesome. But uh, there is not really a connection. My sister's name is Tulsa, and I actually dedicated the film to my sister. Uh, my sister is one of the most loving, sweet, um, great people on this earth. And if you ever met her, you'd walk away saying, I think I just met one of the nicest, genuine, um, loving people I've, I, I've ever met in my life. And that's my sister. So I dedicated the film to her and, and growing up, everybody loved her name. And so I said, you know, that's a, that's a cool name of a little, you know, of a little girl. And so that's why we, that's why we called her Tulsa. Well, you're listening to Beating House here on Faith Radio. Filmmaker and attorney Scott Pryor joining us today as we talk about the independent film project called Tulsa, now available on video on demand. I sometimes say home video. It was in theaters for a number of weeks during 2020, even when you had a limited number of theaters that were open. And of course, those that were open had a limited amount of seating. Nevertheless, your film did attract quite a bit of attention and now people can see it in their homes video on demand. So you talk about this, this father daughter story, main character played by you. Tommy Colson is someone that is, you know, is struggling, finds out that he has a daughter that he never knew he had. Do you go very much into the backstory in the film about how that came to be? Um, yes. I mean, we, so we start the, the story starts at Tommy really hanging on the edge of life. And then, um, then we meet Tulsa. So, th so their, their journey, you see their journey start at the very beginning of them meeting and their relationship. And then as the relationship grows, it grows and unfolds. That's where we start, but you do get into, into some of, uh, Tommy's background and kind of what he went through and, and, uh, uh, Tulsa as well. So there is certainly some of that for sure. Well, let's talk about the faith element. You are someone that, uh, well, you could be characterized as being a Christian filmmaker. So how does your faith perspective, Christian or biblical principles, how do they play into the movie? Sure. I mean, that, that's the foundation. So T Tulsa is the third feature that we've done. Uh, the second one was Black Bear that just came off uh, Netflix. We had a contract with them. And then the first one's called The List. So we basically, um, when we write and develop our stories, uh, we have Tulsa and The List are very squarely faith-based. Um, and then like Black Bear and some of our other future scripts, those are more what we call parables. So there's certainly faith elements, mm -hmm. but they're a little more mainstream. Although Tulsa has been embraced by the mainstream and a lot of people, their response after watching it is, Hey, I'm not a person of faith, but, uh, but the faith was an offensive in terms of, you know, I wasn't beaten over the head and it was done in a, in a nice refreshing way. And we're very intentional about how we um, share our faith. It's woven through the stories, you know, all our films is woven through the stories. Um, but we want you to experience a faith through the characters. And so the characters are struggling with, with faith and, and really struggling with that relationship with God. And so we, sh we like to show that struggle because we think it's so important. I think a lot of people of faith and, and who aren't, you know, necessarily consider themselves of faith, they, they relate to that weakness and that struggle and, and, the, and the suffering of, of the characters uh, and the hard times they're going through. And of course, the victories as well. But, um, but yes, I mean, faith is definitely the foundation uh, of, of our films. And, you know, our goal is to help as many people as we can with these films. So comment on the dynamics of this relationship between Tommy and his daughter, Tulsa. What effect do they have on each other? Well, at first they could, they could uh, choke each other. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I'm the, sure so there's, a, there, there's a lot of comedy. So, you know, so when we meet Tommy, Tommy's addicted to, you know, he, he's uh, drinking heavily and, and he's um, addicted to prescription pain pills. Um, and so, when Tulsa comes in his life, you know, she was raised very, very, very strict Christian. And so, um, you know, she comes in and literally throws out all the booze, throws out, you know, his pain pills. Of course, not without his permission. Tommy was taking a nap in the room and she just cleans house. And so the, the wow. friction and the fun begins. And then obviously he, he's got kind of the withdrawals and stuff. And, and so, again, there's just this massive friction to begin with. But then you just see this, this love start to grow and formulate and their relationship grows. And of course, there's 
obstacles in the way that they both have to overcome. But it's, uh, it's, it's such a great, um, it's a great story of this building, this relationship. And then of course the chemistry uh, between uh, Libby Birch played Tulsa, the, uh, our chemistry I, I felt was, was, was really good. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun filming and, and working with her and directing her. Well, you're listening to Beating House here on Faith Radio. Filmmaker Scott Pryor joining us today here on the Beating House on Faith Radio. And he is the co-writer and director and an actor in the film that is called Tulsa. So the main character, the, the young girl, nine years old, her name is Tulsa. And her father, and of course, not knowing of one another's, if I can say it like this, existence prior to the, uh, the prior to this time, Tommy, someone I believe that you used the phrase down on his luck, someone who was struggling and someone who didn't really believe he was fit to be a father. Again, trying to paraphrase <laughs> your words here. So what sort of transformation did you want to portray in his life? Sure. Um, I mean, that's easy. Darkness, the light. I mean, so, so Tommy was, um, I mean, he was just such in a bad place. And, you know, a lot of people nowadays are stuck they're stuck in a rut, you know, and certainly not everybody, but so many people, they struggle, you know, and they have these different struggles and Tommy's just got them all, all these demons and they're just beating up on him. And he's just, he's just done. I mean, he's just done with life. And so then of course, uh, as Tulsa is the light in the film, um, she's, you know, she's a, a believer. She's a, a, a strong woman of faith, even though she's really young and she's just bound and determined to, um, you know, be a strong witness to Tommy. And so it's kind of a role reversal, you know, normally see adult, but in this case, it's, it's this young girl and just her being this, this awesome light to Tommy and just challenging him. And, and Tommy's like, I don't, I don't believe that stuff, but she just keeps challenging him. And, uh, and, and then, you know, obviously God works on Tommy's heart and uh, it's, it's, it's an awesome, it's an awesome story. Well, Scott, let's wax biographical. For just a few moments, tell me about how God led you on this journey into filmmaking. Well, it was uh, it was it's kind of a long journey, but uh, essentially, and Bob, we talked a little bit about this um, before the show. But um, you know, I was in high school, and um, I didn't go to any sort of liberal arts high school or anything like that. And uh, I just had a, a teacher, my Bible teacher. Um, he would have us do every year these skits and we just make up skits and, and um, apply like a biblical principle and some verses to the skit. How it really played out is we made up whatever skit we wanted and then just read a couple of Bible verses in the end. And I don't know if they had much to do with each other, but, but it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And so that really sparked uh, my creativity. And it's funny because I got an email from him recently and he's like, hey, I've watched your films. And I said, hey, you know, this all started in your class. <laughs> but from, from high school, I went, in, I went out to college and um, I did some acting. Although I was a business major and art minor, I did acting. Um, I was in a Shakespeare, big Shakespeare play and um, just different uh, student body productions and, and just different comedy stuff and, you know, just whatever. I just enjoyed that. And then I started, um, I was asked to write some skits for, for a church I was going to at the time. And so I did that. And then I wrote our Christmas play and then we performed that. Uh, and then just... I didn't put my name on the, the Christmas play, but people, we got a really positive response and they're like, you got to, who, who wrote that? You, you have to do something with that. So then um, I felt led to make that into a fully feature film. And that was our very first film called The List, which is out on, you know, it's distributed around the world. You can see it on Amazon uh, Prime, just a lot of different places, but it's called The List. So if you, if you search Scott Pryor, The List, or go to Pryor Entertainment, P-R-Y-O-R Entertainment, we have our films and kind of how, how uh, people can watch them. But that was the very first one. And then um, the list actually won a number of awards. It won the most inspirational uh, Christian film by the largest uh, Christian film festival in, in the world. And then it, we had some other uh, film festivals that we put it in secular film festivals and it was winning basically wow. top honors and in, in some of those. And so we thought, okay, we, we have something. Then of course it got distribution. So then Black Bear, our second film, which is a, a Marine, it's a gritty Marine underground cage fight film. Um, same thing, we, we, we made the film and that's more of a parable, definitely reaching out to like the veteran community and the mixed martial arts community and, and all that. And um, so anyhow, again, we were nominated for a number of awards and got distribution, um, you know, Netflix picked it up and a bunch of other, you know, places. And so we just felt, and of course we get response from all over the world on these films. 
And so we're like, okay, this is definitely um, something that we're, we're uh, interested in. And then of course, Tulsa was the natural progression, but we still, um, even with the list, which we made in 2013 and a very, very, very limited budget, we got two emails within the last year from two separate ladies, one in Canada, one in the U S who uh, they said, basically um, God used the film to save their life. Uh, both were having um, wow. issues with suicidal thoughts. And so obviously we make these films in order to help people, but it's always great to get messages, you know, from honestly around the world of, Hey, the film, you know, just helped us. And so we're, we're super excited. So what would you want audiences to take away from the film? Um, so I want them to, you know, I want an audience to, excuse me, I want families to come together or churches. I mean, whoever come together, watch this film. Um, and honestly, we want to help people. So let me give you two, two examples. Uh, when, during his theatrical run, we had a father walk out of the theater and he said, you know, I was going to go out with my group of friends, but instead I'm going to go and call my son. I haven't talked to my son in a number of years because we've had him falling out. He said, I'm going to go mend that relationship with my son. Mm. Uh, same showing. Uh, we had a lady walk out of the theater and she said, you know, um, she was in the bathroom and there was another lady who was there and they were both in tears. And she said, you know, um, I walked away from faith years and years ago. And she said, after watching the film, I want to reconnect with my faith. And so that's, that's, that's what we, you know, that's why we make the films. We want um, God to use the film to really connect in people's lives um, and just honestly, men to connect back to God, connect to their faith or strengthen their faith and strengthen the, uh, the relationships with their with their family and, and uh, friends and fellow human beings. And Scott, before we started this conversation, you made a very good point. In the midst of the pandemic, Tulsa was released to theaters. Of course, you had a limited number of movies out there, a limited number of screens, and a limited number of people that could go see the movie in the individual theaters. And so amidst some of the fare that was out there during the pandemic, this was a film that was, well, can I say it like this? It was a, a bit different than what was being offered during the pandemic. I, I think against that backdrop, that speaks, this is the type of message that would speak powerfully to people who are looking for hope, who are encountering or who have been encounter, encountering despair over the past few months. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we get messages, literally, um, we got, number of messages since it came out recently on VOD and DVD and, and cable. Um, we've got messages of that exact thing. Um, just, wow, this was the message of hope. And, and Bob, like you and I were talking, I was told you are crazy to put it in theaters <laughs> right now. Like absolutely do not put it in theaters right now. You're crazy. And like, we prayed about it and we just had an opportunity um, to, to put it in theaters nationwide. And, and, you know, honestly, I prayed about it. And I, I remember going to, you know, where I walk and run. And I remember just praying, I'm like, God, what do you want us to do? This is a huge risk. And, and, um, and it was a little silent. And then I thought, you know, God gave us, he opened a massive door. Um, he opened a massive door and um, gave us this opportunity. And I thought he, he may be stepping back and saying, how much are you going to trust me? Mm -hmm. And so I just said, look, we'll take every single theater. Let's go. And the first couple weeks, Bob, were, uh, were rough because, again, people didn't even know theaters were open. And then people were escaped, afraid to go out because of COVID. And then I thought, oh, did I make a mistake? And then I was just praying. I'm like, God, I feel like I'm in the wilderness right now. I feel like I made a massive, you know, miscalculation and maybe I wasn't so smart. And so, uh, but as the week slowly but surely turned, um, people, you know, even if there was four or five people who went to the theater and saw it, they were going out and telling their friends and posting on social media, you have got to see this film. This is the best film we've seen in a long time. Something like, this is my favorite film ever. I've watched it. So we knew that Tulsa was definitely a word of mouth film because once people watch it, they have a really strong reaction typically. And so we saw it kind of snowball. Um, and there was one theater in Louisiana where the mayor called us and he's like, I have to have this, this film in my town, uh, in my theater. And, and it was like a one theater uh, type, you know, town. And, and uh, so we showed it and then actually uh, Tenant came, Christopher Nolan's Tenant came. Of course, that's a huge film. And they watched that. And then he, he asked if they could put Tulsa back in that theater after Tenant kind of made its run. And so it was, you know, and again, that is, that's the grace of God, just opening doors um, for this project. So we're just super, uh, you know, I'm so happy and, and excited for it. 
The name of the film is Tulsa. Scott Pryor is one of the actors. I guess you might say you are one of the lead actors in the film, also co-writer and director of Tulsa. And if people want to find out more information about it, how can they do that online? Sure. So if you go to TulsaTheMovie.com, Tulsa is T-U-L-S-A, TulsaTheMovie.com, to find out about Tulsa. If you want to follow um, all of our projects, if you go to PriorEntertainment.com, and Prior, of course, is P-R-Y-O-R, or if you want to uh, follow um, other projects that I'm associated with, including um, Prior Entertainments, uh, you can follow me on social media, which is official Scott Prior, of course, Prior, P-R-Y-O-R, hmm. um, and that's Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Very good. Scott Pryor. Hey, enjoy the conversation today. Thanks for joining us here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. Thank you so much, Bob, for having me. We really appreciate it. Go out and see the movie, everybody, and uh, reach out to us. Let us know how you like it.